A big thank you to GoDaddy for sponsoring this video. GoDaddy Managed WordPress Hosting is a great way to quickly create and host your WordPress site. Go to bit.ly forward slash jamiewp to get 30% off your managed WordPress hosting today. A few days ago, I published a video which has had by far the biggest reaction to any video I've ever published. It was called the Billion Dollar WordPress Page Builder Idea, and it was all about building a drag and drop page builder on top of Gutenberg aimed specifically for beginners and designers. And in that video, I used the Canva website builder. Yep, there is one to show you what might be possible with a drag and drop user interface. And I have to say, most of you absolutely love the idea. So in this video, I'm going to take it for a deeper spin just to see how good it is. We're also going to look at the code quality and also whether it's accessible and also whether it's mobile friendly. And what I'm going to do is take a website, in this case the Notion website, and try and recreate it in about 10 minutes just using Canva. Let's dive in. So as ever with these website recreations, I've got the website I'm going to build over on the left here and the website I'm trying to build over on the right. In this case, it's the Notion website and I'm using the Canva Website Builder. I'm not going to try and build the entirety of this home page. I just want to pick out a few of the elements and just see how far I can get in 10 minutes and see how good this builder is. So I'm going to start with this text along the top here. So I should just be able to copy and paste that into my Canva design. Let's move it up to the top, put it in the sort of position. You can see it can snap to the middle, which is quite cute. And then up here, I think if I know Canva, I can adjust the letter spacing and also the line spacing. I can also change the font up here. So I think Notion is sort of using an inter style font. And I think it's probably bold as well. So let's just select all this and let's make that bold. Yep, pretty good, not bad at all. Let's go on to this next bit here. So this should be sort of meat and drink for, oh, that's a bit weird, meat and drink for um, Canva because it's just text and it's kind of what it does. Let's just change the letters line spacing here as well. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I forgot to say, make sure you hang around to the end of the video because we're going to put the website I publish through some speed testing and through some accessibility testing. Right, let's get back to it. That's not bad. Again, we'll snap it to the middle and it looks like it's... Actually, I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, next, we've got this, which is a button. Not quite sure how to do buttons. I think you have to add an element first. Let's try it this way. And then resize it and sort of design it here. In fact, what I'm going to do is just make this bigger so I can see what I'm doing and then I'll move it. So I'm going to design the button first, get the right sort of size and then let's change the background color. And then I'm going to add some text into that button. Probably just a, I don't know, these headings and subheadings with Canva aren't in HTML terms, they're not described as headings, they are just text. So this is one of the big issues we're probably gonna see later on is Canva is not accessibly friendly or it doesn't produce semantic HTML because it just doesn't yet. I think they're working on it though, right? But you can see how easy it is for me to design stuff. Get Notion free, if I can spell it. Get Notion free, come on. And then what we can do is group that, actually, no, it doesn't group it automatically. We can group that button and then move it around. Let me just adjust the canvas size so I can see what I'm doing. Did I group it? I don't think I did. Let's group it. So right click after selecting the elements and group it. It's not quite right. I've got a little bit too much radius on it, but it still looks kind of cool. And then I've just got some text alongside that. I'm just going to add a subhead again. Let's move it across. Close this down. And this one just says request a demo. So I'm not going to spend too long on this. Request a demo because I really want to get to this section. I think that looks kind of challenging and interesting. So with this one, I can link it. So you can see when I highlight it, I can create a little link to it. So that's how you create hyperlinks. I'm just going to put in some false links today. I'm not going to link it to anything real. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of inherent styling. Uh, this is all just drag and drop so you have no style sheets anywhere but that's pretty good right next I want this section but one of the nice things you can do with Canva you have this sort of section so you can see I can adjust my section there and add another page which is basically another section in Canva's speak because with Canva at the moment you can only create one page of websites right I'm going to add this graphic now which I should have uploaded just drag it into the page Let's close that section down and now I'm going to move it to the top here and You'll see it'll snap to the middle again. So I'm doing okay. Then we've got these boxes here. I want to have a go at those because those look fun. I think I'm just going to add an element. 
like so. I'm going to get this right first. Let's zoom in on this so we can actually, actually how can I zoom in on this? Let's put it in the middle and zoom in and get it sort of right. And then I'll adjust the style. So let's click on it, change the background color like so. And then I've got an icon in here I want to add. So I've uploaded a sort of icon. It's not identical to what we've got on the Notion website, but I just want to get the sort of base design roughly right to see if it's possible to do this stuff in Canva. We can't do any kind of hover stuff in Canva. All I can do is the designy stuff, but let's see how we get on. So we've got that icon in the top left. That's about right. And then we've got, I think, probably just a subhead in there. And I'm just going to write docs for this one. And let's move it into the box. Now, in a minute, what I'm going to do is group this. You can see I can resize it here. In fact, let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is group this and duplicate it, hopefully. I've seen that. You can do that in just sort of normal Canvas stuff. So I'm assuming you can do it in the website. And then I just want some text underneath here. I'm just going to add some body text. And I'm just going to squish that in like so and adjust the justification. Make it a wee bit smaller. Like so, let's stretch this out a bit so it's roughly right. So that's not bad at all, I think. Let's just zoom out so we can see what we're doing. Now what I'm going to do is group this. I'm sort of happy with it and just move it. And I'm only going to put four of these, but let's sort of butt it up here. And I think I'm going to group it and then I'm going to duplicate like so. And let's duplicate again and duplicate again and we should see it'll actually start to automatically snap to the same proportions, which is really cool. Look at that as I drag that one to the left. It's giving me the right proportions. Now mine are more spaced out than the Notion ones, but that's okay. I think I just want to get the sort of spirit of the design. I just want to try this one for the remaining few minutes, uh, but we're not doing badly, are we? It's looking, it's looking pretty good. This is quite interesting because we've got these graphics and then we've got this person here, which I think is quite an interesting challenge. So I'm going to start by adding my heading text. I'm just going to copy and paste that across. Again, let's make it bigger. Now, one of the things you can do, I think, in Canva is you can duplicate styles. So if I click on this one and go copy style, I can literally just click on that. And that's kind of cool. And I can just copy that style. And then I've just got a whole bunch of icons. Now I'm just going to use the icon I've got and duplicate it. Uh, where is it? Uploads. Here we go. There's my, uh, let's use that icon again. Let's close that down. And we've got, I'm not going to do it exactly, but we've got a whole bunch of icons. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate each time. See what, what's kind of cool is you get one right and then you hit duplicate and it just knows what you want to do. That's super cool. That's really clever. I think they call it quick flow in Canvas speak and it's an option to turn on which I think I've done. Oh, hello. But, but it's really smart. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do one more. Let's do one more. That's about right. And then what I'm going to do is select them all and group them and then move them down a wee bit. And then I've got this graphic to add, which I have uploaded, but I haven't got it quite right because it's it's actually not transparent. So I'm cheating slightly because the one on the website isn't quite isn't uh, transparent. So I'm actually going to position this behind my little icon. So it's not going to be identical. So that's what we've got. It still looks pretty cool. And then I've just got this character here. Let's drag her into the page, close it down. And then I'm just going to move her. So she's actually perfectly in line with the heading. I'm almost out of time. So I just want to do this section here and maybe this section here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this text like so and come across here and just paste that in. Now I think this font is different. So I think I'm probably going to choose Garamond because I love Garamond and <laughs> it looks somewhat similar, not identical. And let's just squish that in, make it bigger and then drag it somewhere like this, I guess. It's still too small, isn't it? Let's make it bigger. Like so, it's still too small. Let's make it bigger still. It's not quite right, but it, it'll do. And then we've got this section down here, which is just an image. 
from Meta Labs. Let's drag that into the page. And this should be fairly straightforward. So we can just drag this here like so, and then just grab this bit of text here. And we're gonna actually snap that to the middle, I think, and move Meta Lab across. And then we're just gonna make that unbold. So that's pretty close. And then I'm gonna, actually that space isn't bad. Then we've just got this section down here with these two characters. So that's the final thing I'm gonna do. If I have them, here they are. So I'm gonna add them here, make them smaller. Let's get rid of that, make them smaller. And then we want, I think, I'm just gonna create this little section here. So that's an element. It has a little radius on it. So let's drag that across. I'm gonna make the page a little bit deeper. Sorry, the section a little bit deeper. And let's just drag that like so. And it's close enough and change the color. Again, the color's quite subtle really. Probably not that subtle. Let's change the color. Oh, what have I done? Let's change the color here. I'll make it a little bit less subtle than the actual Notion website, just so it's easy for us to see. She seems to have her hands over it. So if I can move this behind them, then maybe her, yeah, look at that, that's cool. <laughs> her little hands are peeking out over the top of it. Let's see if that actually works when we publish it though. So that's kind of funky. And then we've just got some text here. So let's just copy and paste that across into that box. Let's align that left and make it smaller. I'm not gonna to spend too long on this because you kind of get the idea with text that you can just drag and drop it wherever you want. And in fact, that first bit needs to be bigger. So can I separate that out? Oh, I can, that's quite cool. And let's reduce that a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. And then we're gonna add the final thing today. I wanna to add an upload, which is just that picture there. Now on the Notion website, this is dynamic and it's doing all sorts of whizzy stuff. On my website, it's just a static graphic, but it's kind of cool. We're kind of getting an approximation of what it looks like. Let's make that a little bit smaller, maybe. There we go. Cool. So let's ha let's compare what we've got. I haven't done it exactly. I haven't done all the elements, but this is my website. Uh, these are too small, but this is my website. This is the Notion website. I've got the spirit of the website, I think. And if, as you saw, it was pretty easy. We're going to see what it actually looks like in a second when I publish it. So stay on for that. This is this section here. And then this is the final section uh, down here. Oh, I missed that heading. Let's add that heading. That's crazy. Pretty good. There we go. There's my finished <laughs> site over on the left. There's the Notion website. In about 10 minutes, it's not bad, but... Let's publish it. Let's see what it actually looks like. So with Canva, it's incredibly easy. You can either publish, this is on the pro account to a free domain. You can actually purchase a domain or use an existing domain. I'm just gonna publish to a free free domain. I'm gonna call it Notions. So here's my website over on the left. Here is the Notion website. It's not identical, but it's not bad for 10 minutes work. And let's scroll down. Yeah, I mean, all the elements seem to be kind of, yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Uh, all the elements seem to be, where I design them. Let's check out what it looks like on a mobile, what happens when I squish. So actually that's pretty cool, isn't it? So it's kind of working. These are stacking. These elements are working. That's broken. Now I think if I'd group these elements, they would stay together because when you group elements, it kind of tells Canva that they need to not stack like this. I might go and test that out, but that's working as well. So actually that is surprisingly impressive. If you are a developer and you want to find out more about how Canva actually built this, I will put a link to a great article on their developer's blog that talks about how they use CSS Grid, absolute positioning, relative positioning, and media queries to achieve the output. One thing that I forgot to do when I was doing my little challenge was to set alt tags for my images. You can actually do that with Canva. You just right click on an image, come down here to alternative text, click on that, and then you can just pop it in here. So let's run my website through Google PageSpeed Insights just to see how it performs. So this is the mobile score and it's doing pretty well for performance accessibility and SEO with an overall score of 91. And on desktop, wow, that is a bit surprising. We're getting a score of 98. So it's doing incredibly well. And 
obviously this is on the Canva servers, so it's hugely optimized for their builder, but still as a sort of rough test, that's, that's pretty impressive. And this is what happened when I put it through the Wave Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. You can see over here, I've got some issues. The most important ones really are the structure. So because you can't create H1 or H2 tags in the Canva Website Builder, essentially your page has no semantic structure. So it's pretty bad for SEO and pretty bad for screen readers. You can see the summary here. I do have some issues in terms of missing alt text. That's my fault. Actually, you can, have, you can do that in Canva. And then you can see I've got some other issues down here. But the heading structure is the real big one for me. So in summary, I gave each of these cool, I gave each of these categories a score out of 10. Ease of use, I gave probably 11 out of 10. It's just, it's using Canva. So if you know how to use Canva, you can build a website. It's incredibly simple to pick up and just design stuff with. Functionality, I gave it a four out of 10. We have some issues on mobile, not huge issues actually. We can probably, if we built something like this, we could probably improve on those. But because it's Canva, we can't, plug in e-commerce we have none of the worst dress ecosystem so four is probably overscoring it but um there we go and in terms of accessibility we have some major issues so i gave it a two out of ten and i kind of include seo in that as well but this is the one i think we can probably if we ported this to wordpress we could solve these two issues this is the key one for me it absolutely is fantastic in terms of being easy to use but let me know what you think after seeing what you've seen is this something that you would want to use on a wordpress website if you're a beginner or a designer and remember this would be built on top of gutenberg as a sort of designer drag and drop mode let me know in the comments below give it a thumbs up if you like the idea thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video again give it a thumbs up that would be amazing because every time you do our cats get a little treat <laughs>